Brendan. Um, what did you make of these comments, scum comments? <laughs> uh, good morning. Uh, it's certainly not the language uh, I would use, and I don't think it's the language uh, that individuals in the Labour Party uh, should use. Unfortunately, this has been something that has crept in over the past few years under the former regime, uh, where the sort of language of student politics became the norm. Uh, the British people, when they're looking uh, to a party uh, to win an election and to, uh, to form a government, want to see a moderate, sensible language used and a moderate, sensible party. But Brent, Brendan, 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 uh, Brendan, I, I heard that Sikia Starmer saying it's not the language I would have used. The whole sentiment is, is, is surely wrong. And, and, and it, it's, it's not just the language, it's the tone, it's the very fact she felt able to say it. That, 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 that is wrong, and nobody is saying she should apologise. They're all saying, oh, I wouldn't have said it that way. Well, I, I think uh, the British people, as I just said, this is not the language we want to hear in our party. Um, as I said, it's, it's the language of student politics and not sensible uh, politicians wanting to get into She's office. She's now. leader the, of the, the Labour Party. Well, I, I'm agreeing with you, and I think the sentiment was completely wrong. I also think that the fact that the, in order to win the next general election, the voters we need to win over are those Conservative voters, uh, former Labour voters, and we also need to win more than the Tory voters. And going around calling them scum and homophobic and misogynist yeah. it is not going to endear them <laughs> to our party. And but, so, but it's yes, also the response your question, of your leader, the response of Sir Keir Starmer. Where is the leadership? When all he says is, well, it's not what I would have said. Well, I would, I would go further if I was leader of the party and would ask her and, uh, to apologise. Uh, I think it's worth noting as well um, that the uh, Labour Party uh, yesterday did, um, the many Labour figures, just as you said, saying this is not the language they were used. I think you're right in saying we should have been firmer uh, and ask her to apologise. And look what's happened. Because uh, there's not been an apology, instead of the news covering our policy discussions and our announcements, the whole news agenda is dominated by whether or not Ms Rayner should or should not apologise. And so any, any political advisor worth their salt would say, just get out there, apologise and get it over and done with. Um, it's not the language that should be used in our politics. Brendan, I was just going to say, I and mean, it's a shame for the Labour Party. I mean, you know, a big weekend for them, overshadowed completely. Yeah, yes. Well, we the you know we've we've got five or six days of an opportunity to broadcast to the nation. Uh, the first day was dominated by a row over rule changes. The second day was dominated by a row over what the deputy leader said. We we do have a tendency to punch ourselves in the mouth, uh, and uh, it really isn't what we ought to be doing. This is a golden opportunity for Keir to try and reset his leadership, for the party to demonstrate that it has moved on. And let's be fair. The party has changed quite a lot since Corbyn left as leader, and I'm pleased about that. Uh, the, particularly yesterday, of the rules on anti-Semitism that were passed, passed by an overwhelming majority, which I do, do believe symbolises a, a step change in how Labour is. But we've got a long way to go, and frankly, so far this week, the conference has not been very satisfactory. Mm. Can it go on like this with a leader and a deputy leader who mm. don't seem to want to talk to each other? Well, I think what's unfortunate is in Keir Starmer and Angela Rayner, you have obviously got two very different characters with two very different backgrounds. Now, in the past, Labour has successfully managed to have that kind of relationship. We had Blair and Prescott uh, going back even further. You had Attlee and Morrison and you had Wilson and Callaghan. Very different people. But unfortunately, on this occasion, the relationship seems to not be as comfortable as those ones in the past. Keir Starmer, if he was a little bit like Tony Blair, would have just said, oh, that's John being John, or in this case, that's Angela being Angela. There were, I mean, John Prescott punched a voter in the face, we all remember, uh, back in the election. And he kind of got away with it by just saying, oh, that's John being John. Uh -huh. uh, but we, we need to have our leader and deputy leader working together and gelling together. They, they, if they win the next election, they will have to work together in government, uh, both holding the party together and representing Britain on the world stage. And so it's vital that if there are differences at the heart, they need to be resolved very quickly. Mm, yeah, absolutely. What's on the agenda today? Can you tell us more about what we can expect? Can they pull it back, do you think? <laughs> well, t today is uh, Rachel Reeves' speech to the party conference as the shadow chancellor. And I believe she's going to put a little bit more meat on the bones of the announcements that were 
uh, released over the weekend in relation to things such as income tax, how Labour's going to uh, rebuild really its support and, and trust and confidence uh, with the business community and also how we will provide an alternative to the government's levelling up agenda. And for me, uh, the economic uh, position of the party is the most important because, frankly, for the past 10 years, we haven't had a credible economic offer. Um, the old high tax, high spend, high borrowing is not where people are and not what business wants. And so today's speech, arguably, is probably the most important speech of the conference. How confused were you yesterday watching Sir Keir Starmer on the Andrew Marr programme? He wouldn't use the word nationalisation, refused to be pushed on it, uh, didn't answer the questions he was asked repeatedly on that. And if you can't be clear on that, if, you, if you're saying on the one hand that we're going to take a... We, we won't own, but we want control of the, the oil companies, for example, but I'm not going to nationalise, what, what are the public supposed to make of that confusion? Well, it was confusing. There's no bones about it. I mean, to me, nationalisation and public ownership are, are the same thing, uh, just a different phrase. Uh, personally, I don't think that nationalisation is desirable. Uh, government should focus on what it's good at, and government is not good at getting electricity on the grid or getting water to people's homes. Uh, its focus should be on defence, foreign affairs and creating the economic conditions uh, for business to thrive in this country. Um, so while he said he, he wasn't in favour of nationalisation, that was encouraging, but he needs to explain more what he means by public ownership because people will be confused. Brendan, I'm just wondering how much pressure there is on Sir Keir Starmer because, yes, we may be two years away from an election, uh, but that's down to the Prime Minister's choice. But is there a sense there that if, if this uh, conference does not go well for him, that maybe there needs to be a phone call to... I mean, I'll pick a name say it's uh, the Mayor of Manchester, uh, Andy Burnham. Is there a sense in conference that something's got to change if this does not get back on track? Um, well, at the moment, I think uh, we, in order to be leader of the Labour Party, you have to be a member of Parliament. And unfortunately, Mr Burnham suffers in that minor <laughs> area that he isn't um, a member of Parliament. I don't think at the moment Keir's position... Uh, is untenable. I think at the moment he needs to do a lot better. Um, the Labour Party very rarely removes its leaders uh, in opposition. Um, you're right, we are a year, possibly two years out from a general election. And now we are re returning to a level of normality. Uh, the Labour Party needs to massively up its game. Uh, we've got elections coming up uh, next year around the country. And if we don't do well in those, I think at that point, questions need to be asked. But all Labour members between now and then need to get behind the leader, need to campaign on the policies that are going to be announced this week and work their cotton socks off to try and do well in those elections.